This video is going to be about the anterior compartment of the leg. And what we're looking at here is a cross section of the leg, the legs between the knee and the ankle. This is from Netter's Atlas. So we can see in the cross section the tibia and the fibula, the skin and subcutaneous fascia or the superficial fascia, and binding the tibia and the fibula together is the interosseous membrane. The anterior compartment of the leg I'm going to outline right now is the fibula, the anterior intermuscular septum, the crural fascia, which is the deep fascia of the leg, the lateral surface of the tibia, and the interosseous membrane. So that outlines the anterior compartment of the leg. There are two other compartments in the leg. That's the lateral compartment here, very small, and then the very large posterior compartment. So I'm just going to repeat again the boundaries of the anterior compartment of the leg. So the lateral surface of the tibia, the interosseous membrane, the medial part of the fibula, the anterior intermuscular septum, and the crural fascia, or the deep fascia of the leg. The anterior compartment contains four muscles. We only see three right here because the fourth one arises distal to where this cross-section was made. The muscles in this compartment are innervated by the deep fibular nerve, also previously known as the deep peroneal nerve, and then the vasculature is supplied by the anterior tibial artery and the pair of anterior tibial veins. The anterior tibial artery is a branch of the popliteal artery. So the four muscles, this is the tibialis anterior muscle, this is the extensor digitorum longus muscle, this between those two is the extensor hallucis longus, and then the fourth one is the fibularis tertius, previously known as the peroneus tertius. So it arises distal to this cross-section. Hopefully that's what I said earlier. Um, this compartment is an extensor compartment, a dorsiflexor extensor compartment. And um, you can see, compared to the posterior compartment, much fewer muscles, um, much smaller muscles, and um, dorsiflexion strength is about a quarter of plantar flexion strength, and there are half as many muscles. Um, dorsiflexion range of motion is normally around 20 degrees. Okay, so we'll go to the cadaver next. Cadaver's leg, the knee is to the left of the screen, the foot is to the right of the screen. This is the right leg. And we've rotated the cadaver like a quarter turn from supine so that we can see the anterior compartment of the leg clearly. So I'm gonna first point out the muscles. So this is the tibialis anterior. And look, you know, it's about a little, it's distal to halfway that it becomes tendinous. And this tendon is just so thick. Notice it's crossing anterior, as all the other tendons are, to the ankle joint axis. So the ankle does dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, and this tibialis anterior is just medial to the medial, no, just lateral to the medial malleolus, and it's anterior to the ankle joint axis. So this is our primary dorsiflexor. It's going to wrap around onto the plantar and medial surface of the foot. That's not completely clean um, on this cadaver dissection. 
but the tendon is going to wrap around on the medial side of the foot and attach on the plantar surface of the base of the first metacarpal, metatarsal, <laughs> and the medial cuneiform. So I'm just going to repeat that again. This tendon, the tibialis anterior, attaches on the plantar surface of the base of the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. So it's anterior to the axis of the ankle joint, so it's our primary dorsiflexor, and it's medial to the subtalar joint axis, so it's a supinator or inverter. As we mentioned when we were looking at the cross section, all of these muscles are innervated by the deep fibular nerve, which is a branch, and branch of the common fibular nerve. We're gonna look at this muscle next. This is the extensor digitorum longus. Extensor digitorum longus. And if we follow it distally, we see, another, we see multiple tendons arising from it. This group are the tendons of the extensor digitorum longus, and you see them divide, it divide into four tendons that correspond to the lateral four toes. They attach into an extensor expansion, just like on the dorsum of the fingers, where there's a central band that attaches to the middle phalanx and two lateral bands that attach to the distal phalanges. So this, these four are toe extensors at all joints of the toe, and it also assists with dorsiflexion at the ankle, and it's lateral to the subtalar joint axis, so it does eversion or pronation. Now this other tendon that looks like it's arising from the muscle belly of the extensor digitorum longus is the fibularis tertius, previously known as the peroneus tertius. So you can see it shares the muscle belly, but then its tendon, we follow it distally, it attaches on the base, let me start again, it attaches on the dorsal surface of the base of the fifth metatarsal. So it does not extend into the toe. Sometimes this muscle and tendon are absent. Um, this is a weak dorsiflexor and it also assists with pronation or eversion at the subtalar joint. The last muscle that we're going to do, we have to kind of move the extensor digitorum longus away and we see the extensor hallucis longus here. So notice how it's between, arising from between, or arising um, from a deep location to a more superficial location. So this is the extensor hallucis or hallucis longus. If we follow its tendon, it's gonna go to the great toe, just like its name indicates and attaches to the base of the distal phalanx. And it can also attach to the base of the um, proximal phalanx, but its primary attachment is the distal phalanx. So it extends the interphalangeal joint of the great toe, the metatarsal phalangeal joint of the great toe, and it can assist with dorsiflexion. So now let's look at the neurovascular bundle in the anterior compartment. So I'm going to separate the extensor hallucis longus from the tibialis anterior and we see the neurovascular bundle in there. So what's in that bundle? It's the anterior tibial artery and veins. Anterior tibial arises from the popliteal artery and then the nerve is and I believe I've hooked the nerve here, is the deep fibular or deep peroneal. That arises from the common fibular nerve and it innervates all the muscles. So you can see the nerve here, deep fibular. And if we follow it, here it continues 
crossing the ankle joint. Now it's on the dorsum of the foot. This is the deep fibular nerve. It's gonna innervate the two intrinsics on the dorsum of the foot, the extensor hallucis brevis that you can see here, and the extensor digitorum brevis that's more laterally on the foot. So that deep fibular nerve innervates the two intrinsics on the dorsum of the foot. Let's follow, keep on following the nerve and you see it traveling deep to the extensor hallucis brevis tendon and I'm gonna pick it up right here, there we go. Here it is, you see it bifurcates and it's gonna provide sensory innervation to the skin in that first interdigital space or cleft. So it's got a very small triangular shaped cutaneous nerve domain between the first and second toe. So really try to find those branches in your dissection because it will help you remember the cutaneous domain of that nerve. The anterior tibial artery should be here with maybe the vein stuck to it. And when the anterior tibial artery passes the ankle joint, its name then changes to a dorsalis pedis or dorsal artery of the foot. And this is a, a uh, palpable pulse on the dorsum of the foot. Notice that artery is located between the extensor hallucis longus tendon and the extensor digitorum longus tendon. What we haven't demonstrated because it's not present anymore is the retinacula that hold the tendons down and create tunnels through which they slide. So this is a little bit of what's left of the extensor retinaculum. There are two, a superior one and an inferior one, and the tendons and the neurovasculature are held down to the bone and tunnels are created and the tendons slide in the tunnels um, deep to that retinaculum. In order to decrease friction, each of the tendons um, has a synovial tendon sheath that surround it so that friction is decreased.